35, 25 minutes away from 8 o'clock, and the sun shining very brightly. No doubt we have the blinds open here because we have a star in the studio. Ken Richters is here. Ken is here tonight to do his one-man show, Mark Twain. Tell us about it. That's a uh, one-man show. Uh, it's called Mark Twain, uh, America's First Stand-Up Comedian. And you're going to do a little Twain for us. We well, sure. You know, uh, Twain would always come into an area and try to size it up a little bit. Uh -huh. and would have probably uh, come here to be interviewed and uh, said, um, um, you know, Dad, I, I you know, I, I, I don't want to offend any of your listeners, really, but, um, you know, frankly, I was brought up to believe that, that God was perfect. And, and I did. Until passing through Kentucky. <laughs> well, you laugh, but in my opinion, the Almighty God made at least one mistake, and that was during creation. I think God should have created light first, so we could see what the hell he was doing. <laughs> well, he spent all that time creating, you know, and that's not easy. And then he proudly said, and let And he looked down on Kentucky <laughs> and was overheard to say by the angels, Oh my God. <laughs> well, you're right, I guess God wouldn't have said, Oh my God, would he? <laughs> oh my me. And an unknown fact, ladies and gentlemen, it's just about the time that God made this grisly discovery. A couple of angels come sauntering down the avenue. One of these angels had an attitude. A Jesuit, I think. <laughs> and he looked down with a kind of a non-respectful grin, you know, in Kentucky and then looked at God, and then back down in Kentucky, and then at God, and then down in Kentucky, and then at God, and finally he said, Pardon me, Almighty. Was there something you wanted us angels to do down there for you? Well, you know, God pretty much takes everything at face value. And, 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 and he looked at his watch, and he seen it was one minute to midnight, Saturday night. And he had already created Sunday as the day of rest. And even God knew that one minute wasn't going to help Kentucky. <laughs> so without even thinking, in response to the angel, God just almost as an aside said, Oh, no, 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 no. To hell with it. Having no worldly idea they was going to get to work so quickly. Good morning. Welcome to 44 Main Street. I'm Beth Ann Petmethis. Thanks a lot for being here today. We have a fun show planned for you. In just a moment, you're going to meet a gentleman who brings Mark Twain to life. I'm serious. He'll tell you all about that. And back in, uh, in 1879, Twain said that uh, Washington, D.C. is the stud farm for every jackass in America. And after the, <laughs> after the political campaign we've been having lately, there's not a whole lot of folks in the United States that would disagree with that. So the great thing is to see that his material is, is timeless. What he said 100 years ago stands up very well today. And I bring it to you tonight, and I want to read you some of the answers that Governor By give on his employment application. So you know the type of person that's running this state. So next time, you happen to be walking down the street with a friend of yours, and you say to your friend, oh my, look, where did this come from? Why, it's a gun. <laughs> and at that very same time, your friend says, why, look, isn't that Governor Bye?" <laughs> Uh, you've 
you've done this for so many years. You've just done hundreds of interviews. How do you keep this fresh, too, doing all this? Well, I, I think back to, I've been in show business for 20 years, and there were many years where nobody wanted to interview me. You know, and and I would have died to come on a show like this. So even when you're on tour, and, and I've been doing uh, probably 30 shows in, in 33 days or 34 days in 30 cities on this particular jump, and you do a lot of interviews. Um, anytime I'm feeling tired, I just remember the days when nobody cared. Right. And I've worked, thankfully, with a, a number of uh, actors who've been around for a long time. Mickey Rooney once told me that uh, to remember that someday they're going to stop calling. So every time they call, like you, I'm, I'm thrilled. You know, it's, it's great fun. He'll spend about three hours transforming his 30-something look into an elderly 70-something Twain. This first 25's Bill Riles talked with the Richters earlier today about the performance. Well, Twain had a great way of looking at the, the world. The interesting thing is that the world he was looking at was in oh, around the 1800s, 1879. Mm. This one was a bit um, evangelical. Do you know what that is, evangelical? Well, it, um, it means loud. <laughs> But she always explained it with such clarity. Miss Horn, at the reading, Ask God and ye shall receive, explained it to us children this way. Children! The Bible says, Ask God. And she shall receive. What does this mean, children? Children, it means two things. First off, it means that if you want something, you should ask God for it. Secondly, it means that if you ask God for it, you shall receive it. <laughs> I said she was evangelical, I never said she was deep. <laughs> you all know what mourners are? Mourners. Well, 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 mourners are folks that ain't got no relation at all to the deceased, but have been hired for two cents to look sad. <laughs> oh, now don't laugh. I know a fella become a millionaire from mourning. <laughs> Just because he was lucky enough to live through the plague. Now, I, I will admit, he did not get rich on two cents a funeral, but he was considered a professional mourner, and he get five cents a funeral. You can see how that would accumulate. Of course, he was worth the extra three pennies. You were no one in town if he didn't mourn you when he was gone. He had tricks, though, all oh, fine tricks. He would reach in and, and pull a a hair out of his nostril, which would cause him to cry. And everyone just assumed he was crying for the deceased. Of course, tragedy hit one year, he'd go bald in his left nostril. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been around for a number of years, and trust me, once you get out of school, square roots never come up. <laughs> Not even in nature. <laughs> <laughs>